Who, who the hell are you? You're not Lenny. You're not the nostalgia critic. They said I was doing a crossover with a fanfiction critic. They said I was doing a crossover with someone named Doug. Ozzy! Fanfic critic, I read it, you listen. Um, this is. Hi, this is Test Zero. I can't believe I dragged away from Skyrim for this. Yeah. Let's just say Test Zero and I were um, doing a little crossover together. Not what we expected, but we might as well make the best of it. So, Test Zero, do you know what we're going to be taking a look at today? Well,. From what I understand, it's a Kirby fanfic. Yay! Yes, the fanfic is called The Adventures of Kirby and the Other Nintendo Stars by the Ngamer1. It's rated K. It's in English. It's adventure humor, and it was published um, in January of this year. So here's the deal with what I do with my co-reviews. I tend to have us alternate between the two paragraphs, but seeing this opening bit is a line of credits, I'll just start reading these, and then you can read what comes after it, okay? Okay. All right, let's get this over with. The Adventures of Kirby and the Other Nintendo Stars, starring Kirby, Mario, Luigi, Metal Knight, King DDD, Donkey Kong, Rick the Hamster, Pick the Hamster... Okay. I don't think that's an actual character. Is he an actual character? Or? Rick is. Pick isn't. Huh. Unless I meant to say Rick twice and just misspelled it. Princess Peach, Queen Rose, Rosalina, or Rosalina. Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. It's Rosalina. She's from uh, uh, Super Mario Galaxy. Oh, I haven't actually played that one yet. Is it good? Yeah, it's pretty good. Oh, I'll have to check it out later. Captain Vol, Axe Knight... Mace Knight. Is that another made-up character, or is he legit? I think they're legit. Okay. Sword Knight and Blade Knight. Yeah, those two needed to be on the same line. Yeah, huh. Captain Waddle Do, Sailor D, Banana D, Kirby's Waddle D friend from Kirby 64, Esgargoon, guest starring, geez, these credits go on a while, some Waddle Dees and Doos, Jims, some Capsule J2s, the Hailbird, Lumas, Chief Kawasaki, and other various enemies, NME Salesman, and introducing Shadow Meta Knight, and finally, the Keeper. Okay, why do you have to split this into so many different sections? I mean, S. I mean, the Halberd isn't even a character. It's a ship. I have no idea. Maybe they're just trying to drag out the story as far as they can. Yeah, they really seem to be trying to pad this story out. Yep, by the looks of it. Well, it looks like it's your turn, Test Zero. Take it away. Thank you to Nintendo, Alvin Earthworm, for creating SMBZ at Awesome. There's no it's there. My friend James and, of course, Nintendo's All-Stars. It wouldn't have worked out for them. Er, enjoy. Kind of, uh, impulsive with that writing. The contents page. Well, we're in for a treat today, because we have five chapters to get through. 
Hopefully they're not that long. The start of the day, chapter one. Chapter two, wispy mad. Chapter three, lots and lots of plans. Chapter four, the arena. Chapter five, Sailor D's report. I think it's supposed to be D's, but there's no apostrophe there, so I don't know how to pronounce it. Probably is supposed to be an apostrophe, but a lot of these bad authors, they do not know about proper spelling and grammar, unfortunately. Okay then, let's get started. Kirby was sitting outside his house, eating his breakfast. Okay, outside should be one word, not two. This consisted of four watermelons, three maximum tomatoes, and one drink. That should be maximum tomatoes, and a drink of what? This entire premise is falling apart. Yeah, tell me about it. Once he had finished, he got up and went for a walk. He noticed that some waddle dees were cutting grass outside Castle DDD. Okay, again, can't, outside should be one word, not two. They were being supervised by Captain Waddle Doo, who looked as bored as the D's. He noticed Kirby watching them. He opened his eye opened wide and ran over to him. Oi, Kirby, he said in a positive attitude. Would you mind helping us cut the grass? Um, we'll repay for anything. Kirby nodded. He and Waddle Doo were good friends, and DDD didn't know. Uh huh, but me need something to cut with. Waddle Doo drew his sword and handed it to Kirby. He was about to inhale it when, Hey, 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 I need that, Waladu said. Can't you just use it as it is? He said, hopefully. Okay, um... Well, first off, when you say, uh-huh, you're making it sound like Waladu is saying that. That should be on a different line, which it isn't. And he went to inhale it when, that's a sentence fragment. It shouldn't have a period there. No, it shouldn't. Um... But then he tells him to, he's about to inhale his sword with, and if you understand Kirby, he inhales things and takes their powers, but Waldo doesn't want him to destroy his sword, apparently, so he's about to inhale it in order to get his power so he can hold a sword. Okay, said Kirby. He held the sword with ease because he and waddle were round the same height. Don't you mean a round? I don't know, maybe he's trying for a pun. I have no idea, but that just looks really clunky. Kirby ran with the sword in his hand, cutting the grass. Within a good half hour, he had finished. By the way, the scythe waddle dees helped. Okay, don't have parentheses in the middle of the sentence like that. It's really annoying. waddle Do ran to Kirby and said... There's no colon needed there. Yeah, indeed. Cool, thanks, mate. We owe you one. I'm not sure core is even a word. Eh, maybe it's from, like, Cockney English. I've kind of seen it used, like, in fan fictions with, you know, Cockney accent British people, so I don't know. Eh, true. He then took back his sword, and they both heard King Dedede. Waddle Doo! Get your butt over here! He yelled. Waddle Doo and the Waddle Dees all saluted to Kirby and left. What a great country this guy runs. The king calls them, and they go salute his enemy. Huh, yeah, indeed. DDD might want to get new um, people if they're all going to backstab him and work with the enemy. Kirby continued on his walk in search of things to do. There wasn't much until he arrived into Cappy Town. He was standing outside, again, outside, one word, Chef Kawasaki's cool meals. Then, just then, Chef Kawasaki ran out the door in front of Kirby. Ah, Kirby, just the man I wanted to see. Okay. Ah, Kirby should be its own sentence. I mean, they have the J in just capitalized like it's starting a new sentence, but yet there's no punctuation. Fix it, please. Thank you. I got you this. He said, revealing a frying pan. Okay, you spelled revealing wrong. Oh, maybe he was, why, maybe he was reviling the frying pan. What did it ever do to him? I don't know. But as far as I know, reviling is not a word. It is. It means to not, it means to dislike. Oh. So I was like, I hate this frying pan, you take it. Maybe. Huh. Either that or they just used the wrong word. Let's continue. Ah, um, what for? asked Kirby happily. Well, I thought if you were, if you're in a fight outside your house, you can run in and suck it up and become... Cook, Cook Kirby. Kirby! They said together. Thank you, said Kirby. And after a short chat, he waved goodbye and left. Kirby then decided he would ask his friends if they could go for a picnic in the green greens. He went to find his best friend Rick. 
He couldn't find Rick anywhere in Cappy Town. He checked in Kawasaki's diner. He wasn't there. He checked outside the castle. He wasn't there. He checked everywhere in Cappy Town and he could not find him. He returned home to find Rick was there. What's that? If you really have to know all the places he checked, make a scene and stick with it, writer. Yeah, tell me about it. Rick, Kirby said, running to him. Hello, Kirby, I thought you'd never come. Why are you here? asked Kirby. I would pick on the grammar, but in the cartoon, Kirby is supposed to be kind of, uh, babyish. Understandable. Well I, well, I came to see if you wanted to play, but you weren't here, so I decided to wait for you. What do you want, Picnic? said, asked Kirby. Yeah, all right. Hey, you want to ask Waddle Dee if he wants to come? Uh, which Waddle Dee? I have no idea. You need to be more specific, author. There's two of them, remember? There's there's multiple Waddle Dees. I guess the one that's his friend. Yeah, and with that, Rick bent down and Kirby jumped on his back and they ran to Castle Dee Dee Dee. Waddle Dee, as seen in Kirby 64, oh, so that one, the one that's actually listed in the credits, who Kirby and Rick called D. Gee, that's not going to get confusing. Right now, he was a scythe Waddle Dee, cutting the grass in the back garden. He was so bored that he wished something would happen. Then he saw Rick with Kirby on his back. There's an exclamation there, so I figured. He ran over to them. See, this is the problem when trying to include characters without an actual identity. What they usually do when they're trying to create a character based on an established species, they give them a name. For example, Goombario, or Paracarry from Paper Mario. I know, you would think they would do that to make it less confusing, but whatever. Well, they did give him a name. It's D. How is that not confusing compared to King DDD or Waddle D? I have no idea. Hi guys, what are you doing here? Well, we going for a picnic. We were wanting you to come, said Kirby. Yeah, I would, but I got work to do. Kirby and him, okay, don't do that, please. Turn to see Rick had a cell phone. Okay. Well, I, I was originally iffy about this, but there are cell phones in the game series. They don't come in. They don't come in handy too much, but they do exist within the world. Yeah, I, I can accept that fact. I just think that entire line was really clunky. Oh yeah, it's, it's all it's crap. Yeah, hey Captain, can you call for the D's cutting the grass to in the back garden? Okay, yeah, thanks. He then turned to Kirby and D. Just give him a minute, he said. Suddenly, a familiar voice came out of the the tannoy system. All worker D's in the grounds are of duty until further notice. Okay, I think you meant to say off duty, said blank. Yeah, it doesn't say who said it. Waddle Doo's voice. Oh, I see. Yeah, fix that. Yeah, that should all be in one line. Rick winked at D, so then they left for their picnic. D took his scythe just in case. King DDD was sitting in his throne room when Esgargoon slithered, slithered in. He stood next to DDD. Sir, yes. Wild Dude just called off your entire Worker D squad in the grounds. What? He yelled, leaping out of his chair. Should I call him in? Yes. Wild Dude, please report to the Majesty's throne room. Within a minute, Wild Dude was in the throne room. Wild Dude, why did you call off the Worker Ds? Well, I er. Uh, Thought they could have a while to bring some food to his majesty, he said hopefully. Oh, right. Well, why didn't you say so, silly? Said DDD, now in a better mood, knowing that they would get him food. Okay, off you go, Escargoon said. Woo! Phew! That was a close one, he thought. Oh, I better tell Kirby and CO, I guess company, to bring back some food. He rushed down the corridor to find them. He just managed to catch up with Kirby, D, and Rick as they were leaving. He rushed over to them and caught up with them. Okay, didn't you just say that they caught up with them? Waddle Doo bent down, grasping his feet and breathing heavily. Gasp! Kirby, you need to gasp! Food back for the king, he said. Whatever for? asked Rick. Well, I told him that, wa that the Waddle Dees in the back garden were going to get him... 
Okay, I'm mangling the accent. I apologize. Some food, right? So in order for D to stay with your good, could you bring back some food? Okay, you don't need that extra period there. Kirby nodded. Kirby then remembered he had no apple, so they agreed to go to Wispy Woods to get some. Dee decided to bring his parasol with him as it was hot and sunny day. They all knew, okay, wrong knew, Wispy could get grumpy, but they didn't know that this time he would be lethal. Dun, dun, dun! Didn't Waldy already have a scythe? I thought he did, but I guess not. It must have magically disappeared. So he decided to bring his parasol. Well, at least it seems more accurate with the games. Yeah. Huh, so what's your impression of the first chapter? <laughs> well, to be fair, I really wanted to hate this. But, I mean, it's Kirby. It's too cute to really be that stupid. I, I can actually kind of picture this happening on a show, but it just seems so utterly pointless. I mean... Kirby wanders around looking for someone to have fun with. If your main character is bored already, how are we supposed to get excited for your story? Exactly. And also the bad spelling and grammar kind of takes away from the story as well. This page is... It's, I mean, this chapter is only a page and a half long. How is it possible that it already feels padded? I know. Well, hopefully the next chapter will be better. So let's move on to chapter two. Alright. Well, that's chapter two. Uh, it looks exactly the same. Huh. Well, I don't know. Maybe they just messed up and posted the same chapter twice. Let's take a look at chapter three. That's probably the real chapter two. It's already getting confusing. Uh, no, it looks the same as well. You have got to be kidding me. Chapter four is also the same. In fact, these are all the exact same story. My God! Was this person so proud of their first chapter that they had to post it four times? Maybe they were trying to placehold to extend the story later on, but they didn't know how to do that, so they just posted the same story each time. Well, seeing this hasn't been updated since January of 2011, something tells me they're not going to be um, replacing the chapters anytime soon. Oh God, this isn't good. We need to find another story to review together. Hmm. Oh! It's a Mario and Kirby crossover called Kirby's Adventure. Not to be confused with the game, of course. The author is... Smeaky? Not sure if I'm saying that right, but okay. Oh, it's another multi-chaptered fanfic, but at least it looks like all these chapters are different from each other. That's one plus. Okay, the story's rated K, it's in English, it's Adventure Friendship, it's Mario. Well, hey, if it's a crossover with Kirby, shouldn't the characters be Mario and Cor Kirby? Huh. And it only has one review. Well, that's promising. So, Tessiro, do you want to read the author's note, or do you want me to do the honors? Well, whoever gets to read the author's note will be doing the bulk of the first chapter, because that seems to actually be longer than the story itself. Hmm. Alright, well then I guess I'll take a look at it then, and then you'll read the actual chapter. How about that? Okay. Alright, author's note. Hello everyone, this will be my second crossover story that I will be writing. Okay, I know there's a lot of grammar mistakes with the author's note, but I'll just skip over it for now, seeing so it's not actually part of the story. Now, for those of you that don't know, I had originally intended to write a story after school got out on June 8th, but since I have some time today, I would rather write a story today. BTW, this is a side story that I'm writing, meaning that my main story that I intended to write will be put on hiatus for a little bit. For those of you that don't know, Kirby's Epic Yarn was released October 2010, and I was looking on the Kirby's Epic Yarn website a few hours ago, and I thought, why not write a crossover for Kirby and Mario? Even though I don't own any Kirby games, also this story will affect my main story to an extent. Also, my OC will be in this story, including Hope Space 2 OC Felicity, and something tells me these OCs are probably going to be Mary Seuss or Gary Stews. Anyway, enough of my blah, 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 let's 
start chapter one of Kirby's Adventure, read, review, but mostly enjoy. Even though I don't own any Kirby games, then why the fuck are you writing a Kirby fanfic? Yeah, I mean, that's implying that they don't know anything about Kirby at all. Pick a better franchise. Or just write about Mario. Chapter 1, Teleportion. Okay, I think that's a misspelling. <laughs> you think? In Dreamland, known for it is peace and quiet. Okay, it says it's, but it's the wrong one. That peace and quiet was taken away when a fight broke out in a castle owned by King Dedede and his faux pink ball with red shoes, or red feet for that matter. Make up your damn mind. Is it shoes or feet? Large eyes and tumbling hands. Who is it, you ask? I didn't ask, and there's no question mark, so neither did you. Why, it is Kirby, hero of Dreamland, and King Dedede were both fighting after Kirby won the battle just before King Dedede fell down and pushed a button causing a hole to appear behind Kirby and suck him in, teleporting him who knows where. Ah, Kirby screamed. Period. Uh-oh. Where was Kirby teleported? Well, at least I spelled it right. Or you'll find out in Chapter 2 of Kirby's Adventure. Until next time, this is Sneaky signing off saying ciao. 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 Your thoughts on this chapter? Were you trying to catch a bus or something? Did you have a deadline to get this chapter out and you had like five minutes to do it? What the hell? Tell me about it. Alright, seeing you read the most of the first chapter, how about you read the author's note for the next chapter and I'll read the actual chapter. Alrighty. Alright, let's take a... Oh, for God's sake, it's a gigantic blob of text. Hey, you called dibs, not me. Uh, oh, fine, carry on. Author's note. Hello, everyone, Smeek back again, bringing you Chapter 2 of Kirby's Adventure. In the last chapter, Kirby was transported to an unknown world. But what world? I only own my OC Felicity, is owned by Hope Faith 2. You need a comment in the author's note, seriously. Now to bring you Chapter 2 of Kirby's Adventure, read, review, but mostly enjoy. I think we're going to be doing only one of those. Exactly. Chapter 2. A New Friend. I and my girlfriend... Don't you mean my girlfriend and I? Let's say that correctly. My girlfriend and I... Oh, actually, I kind of need to say... Okay, pretend that her name isn't there. My girlfriend and I were walking around the Mushroom Kingdom when a little shadow started to appear above us. I looked up there, is no cloud around the area, but what is the shadow? I said to Felicity, I don't know, Nick Felicity said, it looks like a pink ball with large eyes. Okay, I should not have an apostrophe S, and why can't you have the dialogue separated? Tumbling hands and red shoes. I guess it's shoes and not feet this time. Looks like he made a decision. Yay! Congrats for making a decision, author. It's heading straight for us. Look out! I screamed. We moved out of the way before it crashed into the ground. It slowly got up where am I? Kirby said the smoke cleared and Kirby saw me. Okay, how would they know its name is Kirby if they, if they just met it? Me and Felicity, he screamed and then ran real fast until he was out of sight. I then ran and then Felicity followed Kirby. Stop stopped at the castle. He didn't know we when finally caught up with Kirby. He then saw us and screamed, stay away from me, don't eat me, your King Dedede's advisors, don't eat me please. He then attacked me, I was knocked out cold. Felicity then went up to Kirby and pulled him <clears throat> into the castle. She then picked me up and dragged me into the castle. Wow, you got your ass kicked by Kirby and then your girlfriend had to save you? Look out people, we have a badass here. Tell me about it. Peach. Felicity called, yes, Peach, or yes, Felicity, Princess Peach said, this pink ball attacked Nick and knocked him out. Can you have Dr. Toadley take him up to his room? Felicity said, Dr. Toadley came in and took me to my room. Peach asked the pink ball who he was and how did he get here after two minutes? Really? The number two? Use the word two, please. Kirby was done explaining. I understand, Peach said. Can you please go back, go up and apologize to Nick? Peach continued. I will, Kirby said. He ran up to my room. I was starting to wake up when I saw Felicity at the bedside and Kirby at the other side of the bed. Nick 
I'm sorry for attacking you out there. I just didn't know who you were. Kirby said, it's okay. I said, I then reached up my hand to Kirby and he shook it and then pulled me up. Nice to meet you, Nick, Kirby said. Nice to meet you too, Kirby, I said. We all then heard a scream. We ran out of the room and straight to the source. This cliffhanger thing is starting to get really annoying, and you've only done it twice. Uh-oh, who made the scream? You all will find out in Chapter 3 of Kirby's Adventure. This is Smeek signing off and saying ciao. Ugh. Okay, I'll read the author's note for the next chapter, and you can read the chapter itself, okay? Okay, it seems fairly short. Alright, let's take a look at Chapter 3. Oh, thank God, it is short. Alright. Author's Note. Hello everyone, Smeek back again to bring you Chapter 3 of Kirby's Adventure, Who Made the Scream and Was Someone Kidnapped? You'll find out in Chapter 3 of Kirby's Adventure, I Only Own My O.C. Wow, that sentence needed to be broken up considerably. Felicity is owned by Hope Faith 2. Read, review, but mostly enjoy. Oh, I will not enjoy this, buddy. I will not. Chapter 3. Who is that? Who is not capitalized? Kirby, me, and Felicity got to the place where the scream came from. We saw Bowser with someone in a capsule. We stopped. Peach, me, and Felicity both exclaimed in shock. You'll never save her, Nick and Felicity, Bowser said. Okay. Kirby, this is someone you might know, Bowser continued. He picked up a capsule and... S I keep reading the... I keep, like, going down thinking I missed a line somewhere. Yeah, I know. I don't think that's my fault, though. I think that it's the insane nature of this writing. Trust me, it's not your fault. I was having the same trouble with the last chapter. Carry on. Inside it was a short knight with a sword, mask, golden eyes, and a purple cape. Poyo! Kirby exclaimed in shock. So, Bowser has Linkara's robot? I guess. Oh, wait, that's Poyo. That's what Kirby always yells in the anime. Bowser then flew away to his castle and then ran in the direction Bowser was heading to we then saw Bowser Jr. in our way and we all stopped. I stepped up to Bowser Jr. but Kirby pushed me aside. I must do this for Poyo, Kirby said. Author's note, the reason Kirby said Poyo is because he knows how to speak English but he calls them by Poyo sometimes because he can't remember the names of his friends but sometimes he does remember the names and says their name after he says, Poyo. Make up your damn mind! I know, that author's note was completely pointless. Alright. I will read, or I'll have you read the author's note, and then I'll read the next chapter. How about that? Okay. We'll just keep on switching back and forth, seeing that seems to work. So let's take a look at chapter four. Okay, it's a completely different layout from the other chapters. Hey, maybe he found the enter key. Yay, for enter keys! Author's note. Well, everyone, sneak back again. You don't have to say that every time. To bring you Chapter 4 of Kirby's Adventure. Who will win the battle, Kirby or Bowser Jr.? You'll find out in Chapter 4 of Kirby's Adventure. You're being redundant. Read your review, but mostly enjoy. Again, redundant. Chapter 4. Battle. Battle. Kirby, 100-100. Bowser Jr., 100-100. Kirby charged and kicked Bowser Jr. in the face ten times, making him lose 35 health points. I guess this turned into Pokemon. Kirby, 100-100. Bowser Jr., 65-100. Bowser Jr. blew a fire at Kirby, setting him on fire. Gee, really? No, I thought he froze him. Kirby did the stop, drop, and roll method, losing 50 HP. Kirby, 50-100. Bowser Jr., 65-100. Are they really going to keep on showing the health points as this goes on? Indeed they are. Maybe we should put the health points ourselves on the bottom of the screen. Yeah, we might as well. Kirby inhaled Bowser Jr., left him there 15 seconds before spitting him out, making him lose 55 health points. Kirby, 5100, Bowser Jr., 10100. Wow, that attack is overpowered. Of course, he only has 10 health points left, so I wonder who's going to win. Bowser Jr. had wounds and was panting he heavy. Kirby then charged and kicked him in the face, making him lose 15 health points. Okay, if he only had 10 health points left, he would be losing 10 health points, not 15 health points. Overkill! Yeah, indeed. 
Kirby 5100, Bowser Jr. 0100, boss battle over, Kirby cheered with joy, and then, and he then, don't you mean then, ran up to Felicity, followed him. Yay, Kirby won! What's going to happen next? Stay tuned to Chapter 5 of Kirby's Adventure. Review, please. Okay. Well, at least I wasn't as redundant as the last author's note. Let's move on to Chapter 5. <sighs> it's more of the same. Alright, here's the author's note. Well, think of it this way. At least there's actual spacings, but it looks like it's the stupid battle sequence again. Okay, let's get this over with. Author's note. Hello everyone, sneak back again to bring you Chapter 5 of Kirby's Adventure. There will be another boss battle? What's going to happen next? You'll find out in Chapter 5. Re-review, but mostly enjoy. Nathan P. Fuss budget is less redundant than you. I know. In transition, what's that? Chapter 5. Another battle? Even he can't believe it. Kirby, me, and Felicity were running to Bowser's castle. We went in, but who was blocking the door to the throne room? Where Bowser and our friends were, you guessed it. Kamek and Kami. We will not let you pass, Kamek and Kami both said at the same time. Oh yeah, try us, Kirby and me said. We got in our fighting stances. There is not a period in the beginning part of that chapter at all. I noticed. I could eat a bowl of alphabet soup and shit a better story than this. I could drink, um, ten shots of whiskey and write a better story than this. Boss battle. Kirby, 100-100. Nicholas, 100-100. Kamek, 100-100. Kami, 100-100. Okay, everybody has 100 hit points as their maximum. I'm not going to read the maximum every time. Kirby charged at Kami. I charged at Kamek. I put Kamek in the ankle lock, then, then the backbreaker, making him lose 75 hit points. Kirby kicked Kami in the face 10 times, making her lose 50 hit points. Wow. I must have got the initiative in that battle. Yeah, I mean, the first hit already lost 75 health points. This battle's going to be really quick. Kirby, 100. Nicholas, 100. Kamek, 25. Kami, 50. Notice how everything's in increments of 5, too. Yeah, I noticed. It's like, be creative. Have it be like 21 health points. But then again, they might not be that great at math. Yeah, that would be a, that would be an extra thought they had to put into this. They don't want to extend too much. Kamek unleashed some magic at us. Both were hit. Kami followed up with the same attack, making us lose 35 hit points combined. Uh, but you're both at 65 now, so that would not be combined. That would be 35 hit points each. Yeah, big difference between each and combined. Otherwise you'd have been lost a half a hit point, or one of you would have lost one more than the other. Why am I spending this much effort figuring this out? I have no idea. We, we've both been putting too much effort into trying to figure out this story. Let's just continue. Kirby, 65. Nicholas, 65. Kamek, 25. Kami, 50. I just realized, I don't think he ever mentioned that his name is Nicholas, did it? No, I don't think he... Well, maybe his girlfriend said his name at the beginning, but he never, like, introduced himself as, My name's Nicholas. Kirby kicked Kami in the face ten times, making her lose 50 HP. Is that Kirby's only attack? I guess. I kicked Kamek in the wall, making him lose 50 H HP. Kirby, 65, 100. Nicholas, 65, 100. Kamek, 0. Kami, 0. Boss battle over. We then walked past them, and we're ready to go into the throne room. Da 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 da! Okay, all joking set aside, author's note. Yay, they won! What? will happen next. Stay tuned for Chapter 6 to find out the reason Kamek and Kami lost more HP per attack because of their age. What? 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 How is that relevant? They lost the battle because they lost the battle. Whatever. Let's, let's move on to the final chapter of this stupid story. Oh, God. Why do I get the stupid block of text for my chapter? Author's note. Hello everyone, Smeek back again to bring you Chapter 6 of Kirby's Adventure. Who is going to win the final battle? BT Dub, my freshman year is over in high school. He's a freshman when he's writing this? I would have I would have thought he was in like 5th grade. Exactly! 
That's no child left behind for you. Either that or he has really bad English teachers. Summer is beginning for me. Enough of my blah blah blah. Time for chapter 6 of Kirby's Adventure. Read, review, but mostly enjoy. Chapter 6. It's the final battle! Okay, all joking aside. Oh wow, they didn't capitalize the we and went because that's the beginning of the sentence. <sighs> we went into the throne room. Let go of Princess Peach, I yelled. Let go of Meta Knight, Kirby shouted. We then charged at Bowser, who saw us and blew fire at us. Kirby dodged, but I was set on fire. Ah! I screamed. I did the stop, drop, and roll motion, nice use of punctuations there, and put the fire out. I then drove, I then ran, dove under, how about I then ran and dove under Bowser's leg and pushed the capsule that held Princess Peach he was shocked and charged after me. Felicity ran up and tackled Bowser, knocking him down. Kirby then ran to the castle that held Meta Knight. He then got out his trusty sword, Galas or Galaxia, and started dueling with Bowser, who then got out a sword, and I ran and opened the battle. Uh, I'm sorry. Ran and opened the door to take the fight outside. They... Went outside, still dueling. Bowser hit Meta Knight in the side, making a wound. He then fell. Wow, that was all one humongous sentence. Poyo! Kirby shouted. Then, don't you mean then, ran and grabbed Galaxia. Kirby, I don't. Shouted. He hit Bowser. What? Okay. That did not make any sense. Who the heck was talking there? He hit Bowser in the stomach, killing him. He then... Don't you mean then? Ran over to Meta Knight. I was already over beside him. I put my hand on the back of his hand. Kirby, he's dead. I said, Poyo, why? Kirby shouted. He then attacked me. What? Ah, Kirby, get off of me. I screamed. Fell City, okay, you spelled your girlfriend's name wrong. Ran over and pulled Kirby off of me. Kirby, Get off of Nick! Felicity screamed to Kirby. Meta Knight started to move. Meta Knight, I said as I ran over to him, Kirby. Him Kirby? Him Kirby, okay. Meta Knight whispered, no, I'm Nick, one of Kirby's friends. I said, huh? Okay, this is just getting really confusing. You know, maybe if this person would actually separate into paragraphs and use actual punctuations, I would be understanding what's going on right now. But this is just, I don't know, is it just me? Um, uh, no, I have no idea what's going on, and I don't think hitting enter would even help. No, I don't even think that would help. It's just a big jumbled mess. Let's get the, let's just finish this. As if by magic, the wound healed and Meta Knight got up and walked over to Kirby. Thank you, Kirby, for saving me. He said, you're welcome, Pio, Kirby, or po Poyo, whatever. Kirby said, I guess we should be going back to Dreamland. Meta Knight said... They then started to walk away. Wait, I said. They both turned around. Yes, Nick. Meta Knight said, why don't you both stay, please? Yes, we will, as long as it's okay with the princess. Meta Knight said, we all turned to Princess Peach. Yes, it's okay with me. Peach said, all right. Yes, Kirby said, running over to me and giving me a high five. The end. I just noticed something. Mario's listed as a character in this story, and he doesn't show up once. Carry on. Author's note. Thank you, everyone, for reading my story. Please review. We just did. Oh, God. Your thoughts, Test Zero? <laughs> this is an absolute train wreck. Yeah. L l let's, um, from my perspective, this story is bad, not... Not just because of the horrible layout and the horrible grammar. Let's just ignore that and just take a look at the actual content of the story. It was a jumbled mess. It didn't make any sense. It was confusing. I mean, who the heck were these? Who the heck was Nick and Felicia, the the original characters? I mean, they were pretty much they, they were pretty much replacement of Mario and Peach in a sense. Except Felicia was more badass, but still. Near as I could tell. Kirby gets sucked into the Mushroom Kingdom, and so does Meta Knight somehow, and Bowser and Meta Knight get fought by Kirby. 
That took six chapters to tell? I guess. This all could have been wrapped up in a one-shot. I mean, if you look at the word count for this story, it could have been a one-shot. The word count's like over 1,000 words. It's not even that long at all. And some of the chapters are so short, they wouldn't even be chapters. They'd be paragraphs. Yeah. Oddly enough, the battle se segments were the most enjoyable part, because at least you could figure out what was going on. Yeah, but even those got redundant after a while. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm more entertained by playing Pokemon than reading that. I'm more entertained playing with action figures. Oh no, Servo! Giant beast machine Megatron with a broken leg is coming after you! I will save the digital world! Arr. So, yeah, this story fails. It just fails. It's not the worst fanfic I've ever read, but it certainly was not good. It was awful, and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. I've read some pretty bad stuff, but this is probably up there. If you've read worse things than this, I do not pity you. <laughs> or, I do pity you. The sad thing is I have read worse. So, Tessie, or now that you got a taste of reviewing fanfics, do you think you're going to make a hobby of it? No, I think not. I think I'm going to stick to reviewing crappy infomercials and video games. Eh, part of me can't blame you, but at the same time, I've seen some of the commercials you've reviewed, and, um, some of them make some of these fanfics look good. Quiet! You're going to give other people ideas. People are going to ask you to review an, inter an infomercial sometime. Well, I'm the fanfic critic. And I'm not. I read bad... Uh, I read fanfics in general, and Test Zero, uh, what do you do again? I review infomercials, generally. Well, it was um, a pleasure working with you, Test Zero. Pleasure working with you. And I'll see you soon. Oh, I think you'll be seeing me soon enough. <laughs> okay... He's a bit of an oddball, but okay. Um, well, guys, thank you for watching this season finale, and I'll see you all next season. Until then, I'm out. Bad fan fiction. Double feature. Taking a look at a bizarre creature starring your host, the fanfic critic and Tessie. So Double feature fan fiction.